Well, let's get started. Dr. Gans, tell us a little bit about your practice and how you began using it through the imaging, how you came to see that it was a good fit for you. Well, interestingly enough, uh, I, I started with uh, 3D imaging way back in 1985, before anybody was thinking about it. So uh, we're going on 28 years of uh, starting with, uh, Combi, uh, with CT technology, rare medical grade CT, and of course um, about 10 years or so ago, uh, the integration of comb beam CT, lower dose radiation, has really uh, lit a fire in our industry. My initial entree into CT scan technology was fueled by my maxillofacial background, and I was always fascinated with the fact that we could get a three-dimensional rendering of a patient's mandible or maxilla, and of course back then, we only had the option of seeing this on, you know, these huge chest x-ray films. Um, when I started doing implants uh, 31 years ago and, and then started to uh, work with one of the pioneers in implant dentistry, Dr. Leonard Linkow, uh, back around 1985, we started uh, doing uh, CT technology to be able to scan a patient's mandible so that we would be able to have that information with a three-dimensional model, this is 28 years ago, for subperiosteal implants. Because originally, you'd have to uh, subject the patient to two separate surgeries, one to take an impression of the bone, and the second one to be able to place the implant. So back then, we were looking at the technology that would, that would allow us to have a medical model made from the three-dimensional, from the 3D scan, and and then fabricate the subperiosteal implant on that 3D model. That's 28 years ago. So we were really pretty forward thinking back then. Um, and of course, at, at that time as well, a, a CT scan was extremely expensive. You have to send your patient to a radiology center, and you know people just weren't doing it for dental applications. Well, I'm hoping that, you know, 28 years later that we're seeing a, a, a huge acceptance of comb beam CT technology today because basically when I went to dental school, and, and, and I'm sure when most of the people that are viewing this went to, went to dental school for those clinicians that are out there, we learned about periapical x-rays and we learned about panoramic radiographs. Mm -hmm. And these are only two-dimensional images. We, we really can't tell anything about the width of the bone. We can't tell anything about the density of the bone. We can't see cross-sectional imaging. We can't tell anything really about volume of the bone or even where adjacent vital structures are. We can't tell anything about the airway, as an example. Uh, that is, is something that is growing amongst our, our industry in terms of being able to look at uh, obstructive sleep apnea, as an example. And so three-dimensional imaging allows us to be able to understand that all of our patients are totally unique and individual. And so we can get a, a, an anatomy textbook and we can look at the anatomy of, of the mandible or the maxilla, but the reality is that every patient's presentation is different. And you cannot tell that from a two-dimensional radiograph. You can only tell that from three-dimensional imaging technologies that we have today. Yeah, I've been fortunate, uh, very fortunate to have been at all uh, seven except for one, which was uh, when we, we decided to do two separate uh, East Coast, West Coast type venues, and I wasn't able to do both of them. But I've been actually the moderator and, and one of the main speakers at, at all the last seven um, Congresses, and I've been very fortunate. And it's given me an opportunity to be able to, to meet with all of my colleagues and to be able to see and hear what they have to say and you know getting back to the other question as well which is one of the focuses of the of the meeting coming up in Boston is the fact that this is a technology that's cross-platform right? it, it's not just for dental implants it's not for oral surgery it's not for perio it's not just for you know any of those entities because it includes endodontics and includes orthodontics and you know and from just about any part of dentistry uh, that that can benefit from three-dimensional imaging so this is a you know a, a multidisciplinary tool that I, and part of the reason that we hold this Congress is to be able to introduce the participants to a wide variety uh, of uses of, of the technology.
Well, but when a, a conventional comb beam CT image, as an example, is is only as good as the data and how we use that data. And so an image by itself, when we visualize it on a computer screen, which of course we can do today instead of film, allows us to be able to look at all of the different bone and, and, and sometimes the soft tissue. Now when we talk about sleep apnea, we're looking at the ability to visualize your airway in, in a true three-dimensional sense, but without the specific software to be able to analyze some of this data, then we really wouldn't know what we're doing. And so one of the wonderful things that we have today is a variety of new and, and innovative interactive treatment plan software that can help us analyze the, the airway space and, of course, many other aspects about what we do. Uh, we can't possibly do this with conventional film, and we certainly can't do it at all uh, with a conventional panoramic type uh, radiograph you know, to, to visualize the, the airway. Well, I, I, in, my, in my presentations and in my many, many publications that I have in the literature as well as uh, I've contributed to, to many, many different textbooks, I, I, I refer to this as the reality of anatomy. And mm -hmm. it's so stark, you know, from what we learned in dental school originally, um, you know, when we had gross anatomy as an example when we were, when we were a freshman and, and we actually could look at cadavers and we were able to visualize anatomy in, in, in that way, um, this is that kind of a tool that we get to see all of this individual patient anatomy and we can slice and we can dice and we're dealing, you know, with a computer screen, not 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 a cadaver. So it's right, just right. a fantastic uh, experience. But one of the things, that, and that allows us to do so much more with that data because we can uh, we we can look at, for instance, a uh, periapical pathology on a maxillary first molar and see that it's the palatal root or a mesial buccal root. We can see, you know, four canals. We can see five canals, accessory canals where we would never be able to see that in any other type of, uh, of imaging technology that we have. And so we tend to think that we can visualize a patient's anatomy. And the reality of anatomy is that every patient is completely different. And this and comb beam CT allows us to be able to visualize every aspect, whether it's a, whether it's a tooth, a third molar extraction, or whether we're using some of the interactive treatment planning tools to plan dental implant placement. Because I, I believe very strongly that, the, the, that this is a tool that should be used for dental implant cases. Because you know people used to say to me, well, we're, we're only going to use uh, comb beam CT for our, our complex cases. Mm -hmm. and my response is, well, how do you know it's com complex until you right, look right. at the image? And that's when you know that you have, what looked like a slam dunk is anything but. The, the area of comb beam CT and the area of, of high technology and digital dentistry, let, let, let's, let's use the words digital dentistry because that's really where we're at today. Because it's no longer just about taking a comb beam CT, it's the integration of that information across platforms, as I mentioned earlier, and across specialties, and and, and uh, does not does not uh, mean that you, you know if you're a GP you're not going to use it. If you're an endodontist you're not going to use it. If you're a periodontist, this is a tool for everyone. And so at the Congress, you get to meet with the experts, you get to see the experts, you get to even bring some of your cases to be able to discuss them uh, with the experts that will be there. It is a, a wonderful two-day event that allows us. Uh, participants to intermingle, speak to you know the, the presenters in, in a very uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a very cozy type atmosphere. Uh, it, 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 you're not going to see 25,000 people or, or 2,000 people. Uh, it, it's a it's a smaller group, and, and that's pretty much how we've designed it for these years. Uh, there's a user group the day before for those people that have uh, some of the Comium CT technology in their office already. And it also gives you a chance to be able to see how we're linking to some of the other modalities and the other technologies under the, the, the digital dentistry world. Like, for instance, if, like we're trying to do a lot with CAD-CAM technology, surgical guides, surgical templates, 
And that is certainly all of this. It was not really taught in dental school. You know, many people have intraoral uh, optical scanners for taking impressions today. And we're, we're, we're collaborating with that technology and integrating that into the world of comb beam CT. And so the concept of just having uh, a scan is it, just one small, that's the starting point. That's the starting point of where we're going. And the integration and the collaboration cross-platform between the technologies, uh, that's the most exciting part of it. And that's what you get to see when you come to the Congress. Like I said, I started doing this, um, you know, back 28 years ago, and I can tell you, you know, if you go to my website, you can see videos from when I presented at the Academy uh, of Osseo Integration meeting in 1994-95, and, and in Europe and all over the world, um, back in the early 1990s, and I, I, I honestly thought, in my naivety at the time, of course I was only about 10 years old, uh, but in my naivety, I was, I was actually thinking that everybody would be using this technology in two or three years. Well, now we're 20 years later, and we're still at the tip of the iceberg. And it's, tr it's truly amazing how, you know, how many people are still unaware of what the power of this technology represents. I, I've always said that I, I believe that some of the most important information that you glean from a meeting is the, is the information that happens out in the hallway. You know, outside the lecture facility where you end up talking to your colleagues and you exchange information and you, you know, you, you get, first of all, you get to meet new people. You get to meet, you know, people that you've known before, but you also get to meet people and this is an international meeting, so we, we do have people from all over the world that, that, that attend. And so one of the, one of, you know, my honors that I, I get when I, when I get to travel around the world is that I do get to see what other people are doing internationally. And I can tell you from a factual standpoint that we in the U.S. are no longer really the leaders in technology. We've been surpassed by many other countries that where they're doing things that, that we're not even thinking of yet in the U.S. And the way I know about it is because I get to travel and lecture in, in different circles around the world, and, and, and I'm very blessed that, that I have that opportunity. And, and this is the type of information that you get to see when you come to these congresses what we're doing, not just here in the U.S., but what we're doing all over the world. I, I, I think that uh, the, uh, well, first of all, the entire line of the ICAT family of machines uh, is, is just, is just you know, fantastic. I believe that the combination of the actual hardware is amplified by the software that, that, is, uh, that we have today, the treatment studio. Um, and the ability now with the iCAT Flex, the new machine that's just recently been introduced, is I think an, an amazing uh, innovation in terms of, of both the integration of, of the new hardware as well as the software, which is critical, of course, to being able to utilize the data. Now, the other thing that's fantastic with, with the iCAT Flex is, is the ability to be able to have uh, different field of views and control the radiation uh, based upon the field of view that you're going to use, including the Quick Scan Plus, which allows us to be able to very quickly um, get pretty much all of the information that we need. And it's fantastic for, let's say, post-operative sinus augmentation procedures where we want to see, you know, did we get the bone in the right place? And we don't want to necessarily subject the patient to a, you know, a, a larger dose because, of course, we're very cognizant of the fact that we, we want to be, uh, you know, keep the radiation doses as low as possible. And the new machines are doing just that. In fact, the ICAT Flex at, that, at the Quick Scan Plus range uh, will, will give a, uh, a radiation dosage that's less than a panoramic radiograph, which I think is an amazing leap forward.